Hey, God bless you, my friend and sister Sharon, and today we are discussing to stay away from Haman. The spirit of Haman, my friends, is a person who most notably in church gatherings and congregations of people, the leadership wants you to worship them. And how is this most commonly manifest in their disposition? They glorify their pseudo positions. These are they that insist that you call them prophet, prophetess, pastor. Some of them are just bold. They want you to call the wife first lady. They want to be regarded as your bishop, your covering. Eat, Listen, friends, read my lips. Any person that is calling themselves a prophetess, a pastor, it's in front of that name has the spirit of Haman. Haman wants worship. Bottom line, we are all brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. And wherever you see a person also being regarded as a reverend, these are people who are not in tune with the spirit of Christ. And you should do your best to stay away. You do not want that hook to get in you. The scriptures teach us through the epistles, the writings, the letters of Paul, that bad company corrupts good morals, values, ethics, uh, beliefs, behaviors that are righteous. And when you are hanging out with the likes of people, training you, teaching you, indoctrinating you to regard yourself even as a minister, friends, which means servant. So we don't put this in front of the name. We just be about what we say we possess. If you a prophet, be one. If you're a pastor, be that. If you are a teacher, be that. We don't have to make any attempt to cause people to worship us because we claim a name of some function that most people are not operating in at all. The scriptures tell us in Ephesians chapter 4, starting at verse 10, that before Christ ascended, he descended to the lower parts of the earth and he gave gifts to men. He gave gifts, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Follow me very closely right here, my friends, because the scripture tells us through that epistle, that writing where Paul laid out these five gifts. Each of these gifts is for the perfecting of the saints, that we all come into maturation and maturity in Christ Jesus. Let's use our cognitive thinking. Follow me. If you are a teacher, do we call you Teacher Johnson? Jesus has given me a gift as an exhorter and teacher. I am not called Teacher Johnson. I'm just Sister Sharon. I'm your sister in Christ, given a grace gift to exhort and to teach and to, to give you um, illustration. This is all part of my gift. Follow me, friends. So it stands to reason. Why are we calling anyone Prophet Johnson, Apostle Johnson? Because you're not calling me Teacher Johnson. What's the difference, friends? These things that the spirit of Haman has done and is doing to many feeble-minded people you become like your teacher. See, Jesus, 
Christ of Nazareth, my Lord, my Savior, has taught me to be about the Father's business. Don't talk about who you are. Be about it. Be about it. And so where the spirit of Haman is, is, is very dominant, oftentimes Haman will beat you, fight you. They will literally come for you if you don't worship their pseudo titles. They want to fight. They want to come for you. They will teach those that follow them to attack you. If you call that person by their first name, they will go into convulsions. Oh, yes, they'll manifest, friends. Why? Because that's the spirit of Haman. Haman, for those that don't know, was in charge of the military uh, uh, um, of the king of of. Syria exercises, he was in charge of his army and he put out a decree that when he comes in the midst of anyone, they're supposed to bow and worship. Mordecai said, I'm not doing that. <laughs> and Mordecai didn't do it. And Haman wanted to kill Mordecai. He hated Mordecai. Because Mordecai, who was Esther's uncle, some say that it was Esther's cousin. But this man said, no, I will not worship no one but the living God. And when we that love Jesus take a stand and say, we're not, we're not worshiping your flesh. We ain't bowing to your flesh. We ain't even coming around that flesh. And this is why many Followers of Jesus have come out of the institutional church, have come out of this foolishness, this worshiping of flesh. We ain't doing it. And this is why, my friends, many will attack you. They'll come for you because that spirit this, that was in Haman is in them. They want worship. If you claim you're an apostle, be about it. You claim you a prophetess, then prophesy. You claim you a bishop, you're an overseer, hmm, be about it. Because see, friends, when you holding and you know who you are for real, you can call me anything. Just don't call me late. For dinner, he or she that has an ear to hear. Friends, come out from amongst these thirsty, hungry wolves. Because that's what they are, friends. I don't care how nice they come off. Any person that got these pseudo functions, they're fake. They're not even functioning in the capacity of love and expression of kindness through tangible ways that we can see in those congregations that they are helping the poor, they are helping the hopeless, they are helping those who are downtrodden. They don't have any fruit to back up that bishop title. They don't have no fruit to back up that apostolic title. They don't have nothing to show for it, friends, but a bunch of chatter. That's it. Show me your works, prophets. Show me what you working with, prophetess, besides nowadays breast hips and your thighs. Show it to me. As they say, put up or shut up. Come on, because the scriptures call them what they are. They're clouds without rain. They have presence, but where is the rain? God bless you, my friends. Till next time.